What's up everybody, it's Patton Smeargle and I have another deck profile for you guys today. Uh, first of all, I want to go, want to say shout out uh, to my boy uh, Aura Bomb for inspiring me to make this deck profile uh, through one of our conversations. Uh, if you guys haven't already, I'm sure if you're subscribed to me, you're probably subscribed to him as well. But if you're not, go check him out. He does some pretty cool TCG content. Uh, him and I just interacted for the first time a while ago, and he seems like a pretty decent enough guy, so go check him out. Um, show him some love. We're going to be doing uh, some stuff together here in the next couple of weeks, so look out for that. I think we're going to test pilot this deck on PTCGO and see how it does. So look for that video on both my channel and his as well as we kind of figure out the uh, specifics of that. But anyways, let's jump into this deck profile. Uh, as always, we start off with our Pokemon line. Usually we start off with our EXs, but you'll notice we're not going to be playing any in this deck. And uh, something that I've been trying to remember to do uh, and will hopefully do for this video is have the full 60 card list in the description so you can go check it out. Um, this is also going to be a deck list that I'm going to be going over some particular card choices um, and reasons why I'm playing certain things, not playing certain things, and things to look out for as we're preparing for nationals. So the first thing we're going to look at here is for Froki. You want to play this one, the Bubble Froki. Um, that's pretty much a standard thing. It's got the same amount of HP as the other, other copies of Froki we have in the standard format right now, but Bubble is a far superior attack because if you can flip heads on it, your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned, and that will set off a lot of, or not poisoned, sorry, paralyzed. I don't know why I thought poisoned. Be sick if that could also poison. But to paralyze your opponent's active Pokemon puts them in a really awkward spot, especially if it's really early game. Um, one other thing to note with this deck, it is very important to get two Froakie out ASAP first turn. Uh, if possible, or you probably will lose. Um, so that'll explain some of the choices we make uh, later on in the deck. To go along with those four Froki, uh, we obviously have four Frogadier. Um, this is the stage one for Froki uh, with water duplicates. You want to play the water duplicates one because it's extremely overpowered. Um, the whole Greninja line um, attacks for one energy, so you want to keep that going. Um, 70 HP for a stage one is not too much far off from uh, the basic, but you're going to want to use that water duplicate um, attack as quickly as possible. Um, so you want you get to search your deck for three Froggy Deer, put them straight onto your bench. <coughs> You don't have to have the Froakies there to evolve them. They just duplicate themselves right out to the bench, which is great because then you can get your four Frogadier in play, uh, provided you don't prize one or uh, have one in your hand or something. That's why we're not playing any Shame any axes. And um, as we go through the Pokemon line, you'll also see we're not playing any Artillery in this deck. Um, this was a personal choice. Sorry about that. You probably saw me cut out. I just had like a coughing attack. Coughing. Um... But it was a personal choice that I made not to play the Artillery or the Shamans or those draw power Pokemon. Uh, that can be something up to you. I'll leave that up to you if you really want to, uh, you know, go that route. But I just felt like I kept drawing into the Frogadiers too much. And you don't really want to do that, especially early games. You can get them all on your bench to get your, you can get your deck going as quickly as possible. Because when you're playing a break, you're essentially playing a Stage 3 and being able to skip the basic and essentially just bring it back down to a stage two is really, really nice. Um, up next, we're playing four copies of Greninja. We're playing three copies of the Shadow Stitching one, and we're going to be playing one copy of the Baby Water Shuriken one from the XY base set. Um, at 130 HP, it basically doubles your HP from uh, Frogadier, which is nice. Uh, the nice thing about Shadow Stitching is uh, text for a colorless and Moon Knight slash text for one energy and you just pick the energy back up into your hand, which can set you up for Water Shurikens or Giant Water Shurikens the next turn. Uh, shadow Stitching, uh, I've seen you know some lists go a 2-2 split. Again, the personal preference. For me, I think sh shutting off abilities is great. Um, uh, and that allows us to not need to play Hex Maniac and clog up our supporter uh, line with things like Hex Maniac when we have three Hex Maniacs right here that let us play a different supporter and do 40 damage. So uh, why wouldn't you do that? The only you know downside to not playing Hex in this deck is can't do it earlier. 
Um, the nice thing about the, the baby water shuriken one, which I will give you, uh, is that this doesn't have to be your active Pokemon to do it. And, um, whereas the giant one does. So that, that can be nice. So, you know, you know, play around with the ratios to your, um, liking, I guess, you know, like they say in cooking shows, season the taste, Greninja the taste, I guess. Um, also nice little thing. This is a fourth place league challenge promo which some of the guys at my league and i uh were joking around but then we actually realized that it might actually be uh fourth place might be the hardest one to find because a lot of league challenges uh only have three players and they have to destroy the fourth place ones so i'm kind of happy i have my fourth place would rather it be a first place but you know nice little joke uh the next thing we have here is three copies of greninja break um Actually, in early runs of this deck, I actually had four copies of it in there, but that just proved to be way too many, just clogging up the hands. This is your main way to win. You got 170, which is an HP that rivals most EXs, but it's a one prize attacker, which is great. Um, with the giant water shuriken, so as long as this is your active Pokemon, um, you discard a water energy and you put six damage counters onto opponent's Pokemon, and since it's damage counters, um, it... Is, that's kind of nice to to do things to your opponent's bench. Um, one thing to note with the Greninjas is you your shadow stitching ones uh, have no retreat cost, which is nice. And your water shuriken one does have a one retreat cost. So uh, more often than not, this guy is your bench sitter. And I often like to break these ones, if at all possible, to break the ones that have free retreat so that you can just retreat into another one um, and start doing some damage that way since you don't need uh, this guy in the active to use the baby but you need these in the active to do the giant water shuriken and being able to have the freedom of just placing uh, between 60 and, and 210 damage counters before you attack if you can get everything in motion um, is just incredible uh, the last two Pokemon we play are two of the Stardust Jirachi promos. This is just to uh, keep Night March and things like Seismitoad at bay while we set up our bench. Because uh, Night March can, can give us a run for our money. Uh, we do trade evenly with prizes with them, which is great because we're not playing any EXs in this deck. But it's just all too easy for them to get knockouts on us. So Stardust kind of helps mitigate that, forcing their DCs into the discard pile, forcing them to play a little more conservatively with things like their Puzzles of Time and whatnot. Um, up next, we're going to jump into our supporter line here. Um, it's kind of weird, but I'll explain all of my choices as we go through. Um, we are playing four copies of Professor Sycamore. This is just to get us to our combo as quick as possible. Um, still a great draw supporter. It's no longer the best draw supporter in standard now that ends back. We're still going to play four copies of this. And a lot of my decks that I'll be doing, you'll see I drop down to a third. Um, Professor Sycamore just dropped down to three instead of playing four. But I think in this deck, four is absolutely necessary. Uh, another supporter that we're playing four copies of is N. Got a nice little split there between the new art with the Rev Hollow and the League promos. This is by far next to like full art. I think that's my favorite art of N, and so I'd love to get two more Rev Hollows uh, to bump these guys out so all the cards look the same, so it's a little easier to fill out deck uh, lists. But hey, what you gonna do? Uh, so N is back in standard. I think it's a blessing for us to have a great shuffle draw and dis hand disruption other than Judge. Um, this was a big toss up for me originally with this list. Once I, I nailed down the Pokemon line, um, I had a 2-2 split of N and Ace Trainer, um, and then I actually went to a 3-1 split, um, and again, this is kind of one of those things that's like seasoned to taste um, with your deck. So there are ups and downs to Ace Trainer versus N. A lot of you out there are probably going, well, why would you ever play Ace Trainer when N's in the format? I could totally see it in last format, you know, where you have a mix of Ace Trainers and Judge and, and Professor Birch's observations just to kind of fit your needs, but... Early game, Ace Trainer can be back-breaking for an opponent. Let's say the prize exchange is, is, is 5 to 6 in your opponent's favor. If you end them, they get 5 cards, you get 6. But if you Ace Trainer them, you're giving them 2 less cards, so I can see the benefit to that. Or extremely late game, let's say it's you know 2 to 3. Uh, yeah, they get 1 extra card off the exchange, but you get 
three extra cards. So you can kind of see where the exchange is, is decent there. Um, so that might be something I do is, you know, cut one of these for an ace trainer or something as I'm, I'm prepping for Nats. If this is the deck I'm going to take, um, I might do that just for that little extra bit of um, potential that ace trainer can bring. But I think you should be playing four ends, um, minimum three if you're going to play an ace trainer to play one, but I think N, N is just incredible for this deck. It helps out the consistency to the point where we don't need things like Shaman and Octillery anymore. Uh, for the rest of our supporters, we're playing two Lysander because um, we're getting ready for Nats, and so two Lysander is going to be uh, really beneficial just to pull things and control our knockouts, especially with our damage counter drops. It's going to be really, really essential to be able to control what's in the active of your opponents as well as your own. Uh, we're playing two copies of Wally. I've seen a lot of decks. Again, I'm playing my favorite art, not the full art. I like this one a lot more. Um, I just like how happy he is. But I think a lot of decks are cutting this and cutting the rare candy. I'm not even playing the rare candy uh, version in the deck because I think that it's too prone to item lock. And with Trevenant being one of the top decks in the format right now, you can't rely on your items. And we already do crutch on our items. This is what's left of the deck to profile and all but eight of these cards are items. So yeah, we don't want to rely on rare candies to get our Greninjas out. Besides that defeats the whole purpose of the Frogadier. Um, Wally is nice, especially if you are still opting to play the Octillery version because you can get Octillery out on the first turn and start using your the ability, which is great. Or if you need to get a Frogadier out early or get a Frogadier on your bench up to a Greninja because uh, you don't have another one in your hand, or get your Greninja to your break so you can start dropping damage counters, Wally can be really helpful for that. That's why I'm still going to play this card. Um, some people are saying, you know, cut that for Trainer's Mail. It's like, well, why would I cut it for Trainer's Mail if this is what I'd want to dig for with Trainer's Mail? So I think this card is, is super beneficial to your deck, and you should definitely keep it in. Next. A two of, of supporters here. We're playing two fishermen. Um, this card is just has so much potential in this deck. Uh, you grab four basic energy cards from your discard pile, put them right into your hand, which means that's four water shurikens that you can do. That that means you can do 210 damage off of a fisherman, basically. That's incredible and can be super backbreaking to an opponent, um, which is why I upped this from one to two uh, from my original list. Um, because it means you can be a little bit more um, reckless with your water shurikens early in the game if you know you've got at least uh, one of these in your deck. It also helps because if you prize one, you still got one more to go. Uh, we're playing one last supporter, and it's kind of a weird tech. And you guys know that I'm a fan of the weird techs and the weird uh, random cards. So we're going to be playing one copy of Olympia. Now, you could play Switch, you could play Escape Rope. Um, instead of Olympia, but I found that that healing of the 30 damage in late game not needing your Sycamores or your ends as much uh, or needing Wally, if you need a supporter for the turn, Olympia is your switch and it heals 30 damage so it acts like an extra rough seas if your rough seas isn't in play or you've got another stadium in play or um, you know, maybe you've already used it for the turn and something had 60. So I think that I think that this is actually really, really beneficial for this deck and can uh, help you do some interesting things like getting a third giant water shuriken off in a turn. This is the card that lets you do that to do 210 damage. That's knocking out a Mega Rayquaza, I think. Um, that's putting you in extremely close range, if not knockout range of a Wailord EX. It's helping with that matchup. It's helping drop extra damage counter to take all the prizes you can off of Night March if they've got Fighting Fury Belt and whatnot attached. Um, you know, helps you knock out an EX and put a huge amount of damage on another. Um, this just opens up a lot of play, so I think that's why it's worth putting in the deck. Showed you before, we got a lot of items to get through, uh, some of which don't need a whole lot of explaining, but let's jump into it. Uh, we're playing four versus Seekers. This way we can be a little reckless with our Ultra Balls. We're not playing the Battle Compressor engine um, in this deck. I couldn't find room for it 
with everything and with the different texts and whatnot that I chose to play. Um, so four versus Seeker here to get our supporters back is great. It helps us recycle our ends, our Lysanders, our Olympia if we have to. Um, also, you know, like I said, let's just be a little reckless with our Ultra Ball. If we got to pitch supporters to go get that Frog of Deer, it's like, okay, I got my four versus Seekers. I can pitch this end and, you know, play it later. So helps. Playing four Ultra Balls because we're playing a Pokemon based combo. We got to have that consistency. Got to go get those Pokemon. So we got to play the four Ultra. Um, next, we're playing four copies of Dive Ball because it's just a free search in our deck. It, it finds everything but the Jirachi. So four copies of Dive Ball. Um, with the, the split of the search balls, you know, four four, playing four four. I've seen some people cut, you know, one or two Ultra Balls and play a level ball, uh, you're gonna play four dive balls regardless. Um, you know, if you wanna cut two ultra balls and, and go play two dive balls, be my guest, it's up to you. You're not dive balls, level balls. You know, level ball finds you Froakie, it finds you Frogadier, it find, doesn't find you the Greninjas or the Breaks, but it also finds you the Jirachi. So it finds you all but seven cards out of your Pokemon line. <clears throat> so I could see you playing that, you know, if you're, if you're worried about the discarding uh, aspect. It's actually something that I'm possibly going to make a change <clears throat> with this deck. Sorry, I'm losing my voice. Give me one second. <clears throat> Alright, I'm back. I had to go get a little drink of water. I was losing my voice there out of nowhere. Um, so we're playing Ultra Ball, 4 Ultra Ball, 4 Dive Ball. Uh, something I'm very heavily considering is cutting uh, 1 to 2 Ultra Balls to go grab level balls, but I kind of like the 4-4 four, four right now instead of having a, a weird, you know, 4 Dive Ball, 2 Ultra Ball, 2 Level Ball. Um, but I think that could actually work. Um, so definitely something to try out. Um, for tools, well, the last of our items before we get to the tools, we're playing one Sacred Ash. You're playing so many Pokemon, you're going to want to shuffle everything back into your deck. Just in case here, you know, Froggy Deers go bye bye or something. For tools, we're playing two copies of Muscle Band, just because that helps us hit some interesting math. If we can't get all the, the shurikens off, you know, 20 extra damage is 20 extra damage. This is a nice little tech that I thought helped with the deck. You know, you could, of course, if you feel like you really don't need that Muscle Band, you're getting lucky with your evolutions, you got the water energies, you got it all. And then go ahead and play the, the Trainer's Mails. I think, you know, that could be an option for you. Uh, last, for the tools, we're playing one copy of Floatstone, just for the Jirachis. Um, another reason we're not playing things like Artillery is it forces us to play more copies of Floatstone, which clog up our deck, which means we're not getting to our Greninja pieces or our Surge pieces faster. So one copy of Floatstone, just to get the Jirachis out of the active, is pretty much all we need. On to Stadiums, we're playing four Stadiums in this deck. We're playing two copies of Rough Seas uh, to heal, and... Um, that's pretty much it. I mean, you know, healing 30 damage is healing 30 damage. It can help your opponents out, especially if that water box deck from Germany Nationals becomes a big deal, then, you know, your opponent's gonna have rough seas. So you really don't need to play a lot of this. You know, if Toad decks pop back up in popularity, they're gonna have rough seas. If Manectric decks pop back up and they're not playing Mew, they're probably gonna be playing rough seas. So don't really see much need to play more than two copies at this point, but that's a meta call, so it's up to you. Um, the last two things for stadiums we're playing, we're playing two copies of Silent Lab. Like I said, we're not playing Hex, so we might as well shut off Shamans and shut off Hoopas, shut off Alakazams. Uh, it makes our opponent have to work that much harder uh, for their basic enter for their basics abilities. Uh, Mega Alakazam is a deck that a lot of people like. Um, <clears throat> And are starting to like at least, and that that can shut that off. Can shut off uh, Bench Barrier, Mr. Mime, if that is going to be a problem. I don't think that's a problem for this deck, but it definitely could be. Um, it no, it, it isn't a problem for this deck. But hey, uh, shuts off Shaman, which every deck besides Greninja Break is using. Um, you know, it shuts off Fright Knight if you really need your tools or your Floatstone. Um, doesn't do much for Zoroarks or uh, Trevenants, which is kind of a shame, but you've got Shadow, si shadow Stitching for that. So those Silent Labs can help. Uh, again, you know, you might want to cut, consider cutting one for another Rough Seas if, if that's your game, or even if you want to cut it for something like a Parallel City or I don't, I don't know. You know, it's up to you again. And then 
we're playing eight copies of water energy. Uh, I need to fill it out with this nice generations design, but with eight copies of water energy, that should give us more than enough for our water shurikens and our attachments and everything. Um, but that's going to be it for the Greninja break list. And I know I went over almost card by card uh, in here, but that's just something I'm going to try to do to help you guys understand the picks that I make, the decisions that I'm making when I build these decks. So thank you guys so much for watching the video. Make sure you leave a thumbs up on the video if you did enjoy it. Leave me a thumbs down if you didn't. And tell me why in the comment section. Leave me a comment on the deck, you know, what you think I should change, uh, things that are going to be problems. Um, one thing I do want to say about this deck, it's my favorite, one of my favorite decks in standard. My two favorite decks in standard are actually water decks right now. It's this this deck and the aforementioned water box deck uh, that won German Nationals. I'm actually really, uh, was really excited and kind of a little bit upset at the same time when that deck won because it was something I had actually had on the back burner and was building at the time. Uh, and then all of a sudden it goes and wins this Nationals and second place is the same Nationals and it's popping up all over Europe. And I was like, ah, they beat me to it. I couldn't uh, debut that deck, uh, you know, that I was working on, but that's all right. Uh, but with two water decks being big contenders in standard, um, you really want to watch out for those people that are going to try to anti-meta, uh, you know, that 50% of the top cut, you know, with Night March, um, Trevenant, Greninja Break, maybe Waterbox, and maybe Alakazam being the top uh, runners in the format that aren't really rogue, and even then Alakazam is kind of rogue. You're going to see a lot of people try to play the Grass deck to to do that. I mean, Zygarde's another thing people, some people for fun are going to try to do. So you're going to see grass popping up uh, and you're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. So I'm not sure um, how confident I am at taking a water deck into nationals. Uh, no, I'm not going to try to counter meta the counter meta and play a fire, but <clears throat> it might just be cause for me to try something different. So that's just one caveat. I think this deck is super powerful and it might just be the play for Nats. So that's just up to you, you know, how comfortable you feel, how much grass you think is going to be floating around. And maybe I'm just wrong, but that's it for this deck. So let me know in the comment section below what you like. Subscribe to see more TCG related content. And this is Powtown Town Spiritual, signing out.